Hi, it's Simon from Painting in France once again, and it's nearly the end of March, but we're still very much in lockdown. So I've wandered just into our back garden, and I thought we well, will probably have a go at um, a painting orange. What do you think? There must be one around here somewhere. So I'm going to have a look and see what I can pick one out. Tell us kind of what you are up to today. Okay, what I'm up to today. Well, first of all, welcome to the new lighting setup. I've got three lights running, daylight bulbs to give a little bit of extra freshness. Although it's a sunny day outside. Um, and today I'm going to be doing some oranges. Starting with the drawings. I'm going to do a simple, effectively like a still life. And also a more complicated scene so we can compare the two. And this is, I've just printed a black and white one out as well, because that is actually very useful to for that initial sketch. So let's go, let's get going. Right, welcome back. And what I'm gonna do first, what I sometimes do, what I should always do, is a little black and white sketch first, just to get the tonal values and familiarize yourself with the layout. We're doing this little scene here. And what I'm gonna do is just literally take a bit of scrap paper mock up the um, size of the, or the format of the page. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll have the orange is gonna be here. We've got a little bit of this, the cutting board. A knife in the background. And then a bit of a segment here and here. Got the knife handle going through the back. And we'll probably forget about the, the shape there. So then, it's actually very dark in here, look. A nice little gap there. This so is what you see, when you're doing a drawing, you get to kind of familiarize yourself with the, with the layout and so on. Here we are, let's do a bit of that there. That's a bit of, bit of shadow there, we'll put that a bit long. Not to worry. Let's have a bit of tone here. And then the shadow of the actual orange comes out here. And over the edge a little bit, onto the tablecloth. Blade there. It's quite often, if, you work, if you're working from a picture, it is often good to have... Um... So we've got this loosely sketched out now. We can see where the shadows are gonna be. And I think that's gonna be fine. We've got a bit more shadow down here, look. Comes down here. I think that'll work well. There's going to be a few little uh, bit of texture on the orange. That'll be key. I think getting that little space here will really make the picture stand out. And like I said, the shadow is going to be darker, closer to the orange, and then they're going to diffuse out. Let's see if we can capture that. Thumbnail's done. We're now ready to start on the actual painting. What I've done here is taken a, the mount from inside the normal frame just to give me a format, a little frame here, so it's not quite so overwhelming as working to a full-size piece of paper. Um, picture up in the left-hand corner, this was the, the scene. So we're going to just lightly sketch in the orange and the segments first onto the board and put that knife in the background. It can be quite light at this stage, so you don't really need to rub it out. It's a kind of gestural drawing, uh, and add as much detail as you feel like. I mean, sometimes it's good to have a little bit more detail in the finer parts, just so you can, it'll help you, you know, with the final painting. Just 
just lightly sketching where the shadow goes. Not too heavy though, because you want that kind of pencil line to fade away into the painting if you can. So, pencil drawing done. Ready to start putting on some colour. What I'm going to do, what I did first was just get a get the, the orange segments and the orange itself a little bit damp with clear water. And now I'm just putting like a base layer of very pale orange mix with cadmium yellow and cadmium red just to kind of set the scene if you like, leaving some light areas there for highlights. Ooh. Better. So now intensify the colour a little bit and while it's still damp put an extra wash on. Still very loose at this stage. We're going to be going in heavier later on. Now even a little bit stronger. This isn't um, the final shadowy tones but this is just helping to give you the see how the intensity builds up. So now before it's completely dried out what I've done I've, I'm just adding a little bit of pale yellow in there just to warm it up a little bit and washing away some highlights. So just rinse the brush out and don't put water straight onto the painting. Rinse your brush out, dab it on some tissue and then you can sort of agitate the paper and that kind of lifts the, the highlights out. If you've done too much, just lightly wash in some colour back over the top. We're going to be putting a little bit of white highlight in there later on anyway, so this is fine. Now I'm adding some darker tones. This is adding a little bit of burnt sienna to the orangey mix and try it on a piece of paper first and then slowly, actually no, I'm going to do the board. It's the board colour, I'm just painting the board and giving it a light wash all over and eventually when that's dry we'll be able to put the shadows in. A little bit of paint grey to the mix. I'm putting the knife in and the blade. Once again just, just wiping the paint off the brush occasionally just to kind of blend that tone in. So we're getting the overall positioning here now, still lacking drama. So, hence the shadow. I mean, let that all, that first uh, blocking dry, and then I've added a little bit of magenta and paint grey, I think. I'm slowly putting this in, working from the photograph, adding that extra layer of tone, extra of shadow. As you found in the thumbnail sketch, what you'll find is that the, it's good to intensify the shadow nearer the, the orange, nearer the segment. The kind of reflected light just kind of pales that away as you come away from the objects. Once again, just a little, wash the brush out, dry it on a bit of tissue and just wipe the edges away a little bit just to kind of soften that edge. This is where the thumbnail sketching has, has come in handy because you can remember where you how the shadow looked and where it's going to go. So you can see now it's it's adding a bit of drama to it, it's taking shape. Once that's all dry, you can start to add a a little bit of intensity to the orange itself. This is the kind of flesh of the oranges segments. It's a kind of nice red and cadmium red and yellow mix. Slowly building that intensity in. So I'm working here with cadmium yellow, there's a yellow ochre, there's some cadmium red. It's a really quite a limited palette. 
which helps to give that kind of continuity within the picture. Now it's time to add a little bit of drama to the orange itself. I'm almost kind of stippling this on because obviously in like an orange peel effect you have got that texture in it. Every now and again dampening the brush, cleaning it and just touching that back in. Keeping the lighter areas, the highlight on the top and then just that reflected little shape beneath. Using the tissue to dab it a little bit as well. Without taking shape. I'm just going to often using a damp brush just to blend the, uh, the lights and tones together. I'm adding a little bit of grain, a little bit of wood grain to the, the cutting board and the handle of the, the knife. It's going to slightly fine. This is a size 8 brush, I think. Just a little bit of, of burnt sienna. And then, once that's all dry, I often put a little bit of line work in using a, a watercolour crayon. This is a black watercolour crayon. They're not quite as intense or hard or shiny as a, an actual pencil. Don't actually go all the way around all the shapes, just add a little bit of clarity here and there. Also put a bit more texture, a little bit more texture on the board. Gives it that nice kind of watercolour sketch feel. And now, don't tell the watercolour purist, but I'm going to use a little bit of white gouache to just tweak in those little highlights here and there. Don't be afraid to, you can turn the board around if you want a nice curved movement on any of the segments. And then I'm going to just touch in some little highlights here and there. You can dab it with your finger to soften it in a little bit. A little bit of sharpness to the knife just on the edge of the board. There we go. That's worked out nicely. The key thing, of course, that reflected light on the on the orange itself, it just gives that three-dimensional look. I mean, you can then leave it as it is, that's great, but if you fancy just a little hint of a background, I've mixed up some cerulean blue and phthalo blue, and just put a little wash in the, <coughs> excuse me, a wash in the background, just to kind of, um, yeah, give it a little frame, if you like. Great. Even though I say it myself, it's got a nice feel. It'll be a wonderful book illustration to your next cookery book. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Uh, there'll be a part two with a, a slightly more complicated scene. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please um, like it and subscribe to be informed of uh, new videos coming up. Thanks a lot.